For most artists, it's difficult to sustain a long-lasting career in the ever-changing music business. And although some musicians do manage to hit it big with one song, they fade away just as quickly. Meet the one-hit wonders you didn't know passed away. In July 2021, the world lost one of the biggest one-hit wonders of all time, Biz Marquee. His song, Just a Friend, peaked at number 9 on Billboard in 1990 and stayed on the charts for 22 weeks. The song is a rap by Marquis mixed with some of the beat and lyrics of the 1968 song You Got What I Need by Freddie Scott. It went platinum in the year of its release. Biz Marquis was born Marcel Theo Hall in Harlem, New York in 1964. According to Vulture, Marquis burst onto the rap scene in 1985 as a reputed beatboxer. He came up alongside famous rappers such as Doug E. Fresh and often worked with Big Daddy Kane. His hip-hop talents, mixed with his humorous lyrics, earned him the title The Clown Prince of Hip Hop. Marquis released a few more albums after the success of Just a Friend and continued to perform for decades, but he never entered the charts again. The rapper's health took a downturn starting in April 2020. He died July 16, 2021 in Baltimore, Maryland, at just 57 years old. Marquis' cause of death is unconfirmed, but he was known to have struggled with type 2 diabetes. In 2010, Cali Swag District's first single, Teach Me How to Dougie, became a national dance sensation. Michelle Obama could be found doing the Dougie at her Let's Move events and on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. According to The Guardian, the Dougie was inspired by the dance moves of 1980s hip-hop artist Dougie Fresh. In May 2011, one of the members of Cali Swag District, Monte M. Bone Talbert, was killed in Inglewood, California in a drive-by shooting. According to Billboard, M. Bone was the comedic center of the group and helped launch the Dougie to mainstream audiences. Talbert was only 22 years old. After his death, the remaining three members continued and released an album, The Kickback. In 2014, the group lost a second member, Karan J.R. Childs. He was suffering from sickle cell anemia and died of a cardiac arrest after being admitted to a hospital. He was 25 years old. Following these two tragedies, Cali Swag District dissolved. Adam Schlesinger formed Fountains of Wayne with Chris Collingwood in the mid-90s. The band didn't have a hit until 2003 when they released the song Stacy's Mom. According to YouDiscoverMusic.com, Schlesinger and Collingwood wrote the song based on a friend of Schlesinger's who was attracted to his grandma. It was an ode to early puberty, Schlesinger said. It's a combination of sexual awakening and limited contact with a large number of people. The song earned them a Grammy nomination for Best Vocal Performance and Best New Artist. Adam Schlesinger was a talented writer and musician who wrote a lot of music for television in addition to his Fountains of Wayne success. Schlesinger won a Grammy for A Colbert Christmas, The Greatest Gift of All. He also won three Emmys, one for his work on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and two for co-writing the Tony Awards telecast. Furthermore, Schlesinger was nominated for an Oscar for the title track in the 1996 film That Thing You Do. On April 1, 2020, it was announced that Schlesinger had died from complications caused by COVID-19. He was 52 years old. Johann Hans Hotzel went by the stage name Falco, and his song Rock Me Amadeus hit number one on the Billboard charts in 1986. While only known for Rock Me Amadeus in the US, Holtzel's 1982 debut hit, Der Kommissar, hit European charts when he was only 25 years old. According to Der Spiegel, Holtzel was philosophical about his fame. He said, Today, platinum. Tomorrow, tin. Today, they kiss your feet, and tomorrow, the dog won't even look at you. Technically, Rock Me Amadeus is a rap song, meaning that the Austrian singer holds the distinct recognition of being the first rap artist to reach number one on the US charts. While Falco never had another hit at the same level, he did sell 60 million records over the course of his career. While vacationing in the Dominican Republic in 1998, a car Holzl was driving was hit by a truck. He died at age 40. Doug Feiger was the lead singer of the band The Knack, whose hit My Sharona was number one in the summer of 1979. The song gained attention again in 1994 when it was part of the film Reality Bites soundtrack. According to NPR, Feiger was inspired to write the song by a teenager named Sharona Alperin. While the two did date, they never married but remained friends. In an interview for Variety, Alperin said the song took Feiger less than 15 minutes to write. 
Figer was born in Detroit in 1952 and grew up in Oak Park, Michigan. Before graduating high school, his band Sky signed to RCA. Sky recorded two albums, but then the band dissolved. In 1978, Figer created The Knack. After the success of their debut album and the hit My Sharona, The Knack went on to release a few more albums, but never again reached the success of their first run. In 2010, Figer died of lung cancer. He was 57. Pete Burns was the lead singer of the band Dead or Alive, whose song You Spin Me Right Round reached the Billboard Top 20 in 1985. According to Newsweek, the track was also covered by Adam Sandler in the movie The Wedding Singer, Jessica Simpson in 2005, and had even greater success in 2009 when it was sampled on Flo Rida and Kesha's Right Round. The song was produced by S.A.W., a trio that went on to create other hits such as Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. Burns was born in Cheshire, England in 1959. His father was English, and his mother, who was German, had survived the Holocaust. He dropped out of school at age 14 and formed the band Dead or Alive by 1980. According to The Guardian, Burns became famous for his androgynous style and his progressive approach to gender. He even accused Boy George of stealing his style. Anybody that sets themselves apart visually is not like anybody else. It's the, it's the most obvious statement that you can make, you know, your visual side. Dead or Alive recorded several albums, but never again achieved the same level of success as with You Spin Me Right Round. Burns remained in the limelight through appearances on reality shows, including Big Brother and Celebrity Wife Swap, and was a well-known figure in the UK. According to the BBC, Burns died of a cardiac arrest in 2016. He was 57 years old. Minnie Ripperton is most famous for her song Lovin' You, which was released in 1974. The song is a high-pitched lullaby that was originally created for Ripperton's daughter, Maya Rudolph. Yes, the well-known comedian from Saturday Night Live and Bridesmaids. I didn't really put together that Lovin' You is for me and my brother. Lovin' You has been featured in commercials for large companies such as Burger King and Visa. It has also been used in films such as Vegas Vacation and The Nutty Professor. Ripperton was born in Chicago in 1947 and studied music, drama, and dance as a young girl. Before graduating high school, she joined a band called The Gems, which signed with Chicago's Chess Records. She also performed backup vocals for The Dells and Etta James. In the late 60s, she partnered with her husband, Richard Rudolph, a prolific composer. Because she had worked as a backup singer for Stevie Wonder, the legendary musician agreed to help her produce her album Perfect Angel, which featured the song Lovin' You. Ripperton's fame grew slowly, but soon she was doing appearances on American Bandstand and Soul Train. Just as she was offered the opportunity to release another album, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. She continued to perform for live audiences until her death in 1979. She was just 31. Polly Fuamana was the lead singer of OMC, whose song How Bizarre was number one on the U.S. Billboard charts in 1997 and stayed on the charts for 32 weeks. OMC stood for Otara Millionaires Club, in homage to the neighborhood where Fuamana grew up in Auckland, New Zealand. According to The Guardian, Otara was one of New Zealand's poorest communities, hence the irony of the name. Fuimara was born to a Maori mother and a Nuean father and spoke Nuean first. He reportedly had a rough childhood, joining gangs and later spending time in youth prison. Then, success came at him fast and he did not handle it well. He was sued by his producer for royalties and by 2006 had declared bankruptcy. Fuamana continued to work at building his music career, but never reached the success of How Bizarre again. It was a good ride while it lasted and I got to see the world. Like, I really got to see the world. In 2010, Fuamana died of a rare autoimmune disorder. He was 40 years old and left behind his wife and six children. According to YouDiscoverMusic.com, the hit continues to be popular. It reports that more than 100,000 TikTok videos incorporate the song's lyrics and that the How Bizarre hashtag has generated more than 1.4 billion views. Chrissy Amphlett was the lead singer of the Australian rock band The Divinals, best known for their 1991 hit song, I Touch Myself. The song was a collaboration between the band and songwriters Tom Kelly and Billy Steinberg, who were famous for hits, including Madonna's Like a Virgin. The music video for the song was directed by none other than Michael Bay. While the band released seven albums between 1983 and 1996, none of their songs reached the same level of success as I Touch Myself. Amphlett was born in 1959 in Geelong, Victoria, Australia. She formed the Divinals in 1980. 
Along with singing and songwriting, Amphlett was an actress, appearing in an Australian film called Monkey Grip and a stage production of Blood Brothers. In the late 90s, Amphlett left the band to pursue acting further. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2006 and breast cancer in 2010. Fittingly, the song I Touch Myself has been used in a campaign to educate women about breast cancer. In 2013, Amphlett died of breast cancer. She was 53 years old. R&B singer Jermaine Stewart's hit song, We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off, reached number 5 on the Billboard 100 charts in 1986. The song has popped up on the soundtracks for the film Zack and Miri Make a Porno and TV shows such as Scrubs. According to All Music, Stewart started off as a dancer on Soul Train and moved on to be a backup singer for large acts such as Boy George. He landed a deal with Arista Records and released four albums, with We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off his biggest success. Stewart was born in Columbus, Ohio, but his family moved to Chicago when he was still young. He died in 1997 of liver cancer caused by AIDS, according to a book written by AIDS advocate Dr. Terry Easley. Jermaine Stewart was only 39 years old. Not to be confused with the Bon Jovi song released in 2000, It's My Life was written and sung by Mark Hollis in 1983. No doubt also covered it in 2003. It's My Life initially entered the charts in 1984, and it was the first and last hit for the band Talk Talk. The band was formed in 1981 in London by Hollis. Shortly after, it signed with EMI and began touring with Duran Duran. After the success of It's My Life, the band decided to change its sound, which made them less commercial. But nevertheless, they continued to work together until they released their final album in 1991. Hollis was born in Tottenham, England in 1955. He was heavily influenced by his older brother Ed, who was a music producer. After Talk Talk released its last album, Hollis dropped out of public life to focus on his family. He later released a solo album and was commissioned to do the music for the TV show Boss in 2012. But other than that, he flew under the radar until his death in 2019. Per NPR, Hollis's manager stated that the musician died due to a short illness from which he never recovered. The style and genius of Mark Hollis has been credited as the inspiration for many bands, including Radiohead. I Just Died In Your Arms was a number one Billboard hit in 1987 for the band Cutting Crew. Kevin McMichael was not the singer, but the lead guitarist and writer for the group. I Just Died In Your Arms earned the band a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist, and Cutting Crew released a few more albums after their debut success, but failed to enter the charts again. They ultimately disbanded in 1993. McMichael was born in New Brunswick, Canada in 1951. He started playing guitar in high school and learned hundreds of Beatles songs. He formed Cutting Crew with Nick Van Eed, the band's lead singer, in 1985. When McMichael left the group, he went on to work with Robert Plant as a guitarist and writer. In 2002, McMichael was diagnosed with lung cancer. He died later that year at the age of 51. It's hard to call Dan Hartman a one-hit wonder because he wrote many great songs, but he is only known for singing one. Aside from writing and performing I Can Dream About You, which peaked at number 6 in 1984, he wrote and produced James Brown's Living in America, which made it to number 4. Hartman also wrote Living in America for Rocky IV, which earned Hartman a Grammy nomination. According to Song Facts, I Can Dream About You was initially written for the film Streets of Fire. It was sung by a fictional group, The Sorrels, and the vocals were provided by Winston Ford. It is Hartman's voice on the soundtrack and the single released that same year. Hartman was born in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in 1950. According to DanHartman.com, he began playing piano at age 7 and by 13 was writing songs for his brother's band, The Legends. Dan worked with the Edgar Winter Group in the 70s until he broke out with his first solo album in 1976. While his music did well in the UK, it was not until I Can Dream About You that he reached the US charts. Though he continued to write and produce, nothing else he released had the same success. According to Metrosource, those close to him believe he contracted HIV sometime in the late 1980s. He kept his status a secret, although he died in 1994 from a brain tumor considered related to his AIDS diagnosis. Shannon Hoon was the long-haired, 20-something lead singer for the band Blind Melon. The group's hit song No Rain invaded the public's consciousness in 1993. Released in MTV's Glory Days, lots of people remember it from watching the video. It featured a young girl tap dancing in a bee costume on stage and then wandering around Los Angeles looking for applause until she finds a field full of bee people just like her. 
Hoon was born in Lafayette, Indiana, the same hometown as Axl Rose, in 1967. The Blind Melon frontman sang backing vocals on several Guns N' Roses tracks and also shared lead vocals with Rose on the song Don't Cry. He invited me to come down to the studio to just to see what it was like to watch an album be recorded. At the same time, Hoon was working with Blind Melon, which formed in 1990. In 1995, Hoon was found dead from a cocaine overdose on his tour bus in New Orleans. His daughter, Nico Blue, had been born only three months prior. Blind Melon had just released its second album, Soup, and Hoon had just turned 28 a month before. Rob Pilatus was one half of the infamous duo Milli Vanilli, along with Fab Morvan. The act rose to fame with the hit song Girl You Know It's True in 1989. That same year, while performing a concert in Connecticut, the song that they were mouthing along to skipped. Pilatus told Biography, I knew right then and there it was the beginning of the end for Milli Vanilli. It took the rest of the world a bit longer, but a year later it became widely known that Milli Vanilli was lip-syncing and not the true artists behind the hit. Girl You Know It's True was not even a new song. It was first released by the band Newmarks. Music producer Frank Farian reportedly heard the track and knew he could make it better. He remixed the song with new vocals and hired Pilatus and Morvan to be the frontmen. When the news that the performers were not the same artists who recorded their album broke, Pilatus and Morvan were stripped of their Grammys and ostracized. Though the two tried to make a comeback on an album of their own, they were never able to reach the level of success made with Milli Vanilli. Money is not that important. For me, it really is important <laughs> just to find my happiness, my inner peace. Mm -hmm. And I can't do this with money. Pilatus died in 1998 of a suspected drug overdose. He was just 33 years old. Stuart Adamson was the lead singer of the band Big Country, best known for their hit song, In a Big Country. The song made it to the U.S. Billboard charts in 1983. According to Song Facts, Adamson said of the song, the lyrical idea was about having hope, a sense of self in times of trouble. Big Country was nominated for two Grammys, for Best New Artist and for Best Rock Performance by a duo or group for their song In a Big Country. Born in 1958 in Manchester, England, but raised in Dunfermline, Scotland, Adamson began singing in the punk band The Skids in his teens. He formed Big Country in the 1980s, and according to The Guardian, the band once competed with U2 as contenders for the Celtic rock crown. Big Country continued to make records and perform until 2000, when Adamson decided to leave the group. They never had another hit in the US. Adamson moved to Nashville to start an alternative country band called the Raphaels. In 2001, it was reported that Adamson had taken his own life in Honolulu, Hawaii. He was 43 years old. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK, 1-800-273-8255.